What a great word. Eric ministered last week. Started off talking about what our faith is established upon. That God is good. That God is love. That God is faithful. That God is with us. That God is greater. That he's bigger than anything. And he talked about the favor plan. Amen. Hallelujah. I just want to step into the word. Because I just because this is this is all going to flow, you know. As as a as a pastor, as a, someone that's a teacher, and as you study the word, and as you prepare yourself, it's like you're you're like okay, maybe this is what God wants to minister Sunday morning. Maybe this, and so so it was like the third message uh, that I studied this week, it was, and and uh, the Lord was like, this is this is what I want you to minister, and and with the songs that we just sung and the direction that that went, not knowing even what they were gonna sing this morning. I know that what I'm about to share with you is exactly what the Holy Spirit wants you to hear today. Amen. And maybe we'll get to those other two messages on another week, but. <laughs> How your Bibles turn to Hebrews chapter two. And my theme since our, my father in the faith, our founding pastor, went to be with Jesus has been a legacy of faith and continue to talk about a legacy of faith. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Where did I tell you to go? <laughs> Two, okay, I was in 12, so I just wanna make sure either I was wrong or you were wrong. I, or <laughs> Hallelujah, say Jesus. I've had people say, oh, well, pastor, his name really wasn't Jesus. But see, I know who I'm saying it to. <laughs> you you got to say it like this. Well, no, my, my heart knows what I'm saying. <laughs> people get so ridiculous. His name really wasn't Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. Okay, I, I, whatever. You're religious. You're, you're religious. Never mind. I'm not saying we shouldn't use the authentic names like Yahweh, Yeshua, all those things, but Jehovah, Most High, Most High God, amen. Let's start in verse one. It says, therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest we drift away. We can read it this way, therefore, we must give the priority, the focus to, and that was one of our warnings this year, would stay focused, a more earnest heed. If I'm gonna give a more earnest heed to something, it means it's gonna become my focus. Therefore, we must give. Not, sh not could give, but it says we must give. A more earnest heed to the things which have we've heard, lest we drift away. I think King James says, unless we let them slip. That mean, Debor, if I'm not holding to this and I'm not heeding it, I'm not keeping it before my eyes, then I'm gonna let go of it. If I'm not keeping this in the forefront of my thinking and the forethought of my life and the forefront of my heart, then eventually I'm gonna go the other direction and I'm gonna let it go. What I found in the kingdom of God, there's no neutral. What I found in the kingdom of God, there's, there's, not, there's either going forward or there's going backwards. There's no maintaining. We may think that we maintain, but the issue is, is going forward in God, is, is God always wants to see progression. He always wants to see advancement. That's why he would say things like, we go from glory to glory. We go from strength to strength. We go from faith to faith. Meaning this walk with God is gonna be a continual pursuit that's gonna take me from one level to another level. But what, what he's saying here, the writer of Hebrews is saying, is that we have to give a more earnest heed to the things that we've heard unless we drift away. Not only can it mean letting them slip, but also maybe if I let go of the things that I've held on to and the things that I've heard, it's going to cause me to drift away from my assignment, drift away from my purpose, drift away from, from my marriage partner, drift away from the calling on my life, drift away from all sorts of other things. So, so the thing is, what we have to determine to do is I'm going to give a more earnest heed to the things that I've heard. 
Because it's the things that I've heard that are going to take me to where I, where I need to go. Verse 2 says, For if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Meaning, talking about the word of angels, talking about if, if the law... If the previous things came, came by God, came by spiritual things, and, and there, was a, there was a consequence to those things, if they let them slip, how much more? How shall we escape if we neglect a so great of salvation? I don't think sometimes we hold to the fact how great a salvation we have. Why, do not, why don't we not pull, pursue more of God? Because maybe we don't have a firm belief in how great our salvation truly is. Maybe we have a religious mindset of Christianity instead of the relational aspect of create Christianity. Because you can go around and do religious things and not walk in the fullness of your salvation. So if I get, I have, to, I have to give heed to these things because if I don't give heed to these things, then what am I really doing? I'm neglecting my great salvation. I'm putting aside things that ultimately I should be holding on to. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord? And was confirmed to us by those who heard him. So now he refers to this. He says, if we neglect such a great salvation. And then it, then it goes on here and it says, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord. What did the Lord first, be, what did the Lord first say when he began his ministry? And this Lord here is referring to Jesus. What did he first say? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. And he goes on, heal the brokenhearted all the way through to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So that's the great salvation that he's referring to because he said it began, it, be, it first began to be spoken by the Lord. Then it says, and it was confirmed to us by those who heard him. So it was what Jesus spoke when he first went into ministry, and then it was confirmed to those that followed him. And they were saying, and we heard what they spoke. They were firsthand witnesses of what Jesus decreed and declared. And so they're talking about holding to the things that were released by Jesus, holding to the things that were released by those that followed Jesus. We even know that through John 17, where Jesus is praying, and he said, he said I pray for not only these alone, this is John 17, verse 20. I don't just pray for these alone, but I pray for all those that will believe on me through what? Their word. Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also bearing witness. So Jesus spoke it. People that followed him confirmed, conferred it. We heard it, but also God bore witness. How did God bear witness? Keep reading through signs and wonders. We can't let go of what the church was originally established upon. Because Jesus began it, his disciples followed it, God confirmed it, and it says, what does it say? It says, and God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with very miracles and the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Meaning it was God's will to confirm what Jesus did. And it's God's will to confirm what you and I do on behalf of Jesus. That's why in the in, end of one of the gospels it says, and they went everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming with signs following. Hallelujah. 
Say, Jesus, Jesus is, is my, Lord. my Lord. Go to Matthew chapter 16. I'm going to talk about this morning, Christ alone. Like I said, it's not Jesus in something. It's just Jesus. Thank you, Father. Matthew chapter 16. Thank you, Father. Verse 13, it says, When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked the disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Verse 14, So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? What a question. Let me ask you a question. What, who do you say that he is? Simon Peter answered and said, then it says, wait a minute. Simon Peter answered and said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. You're the Messiah. You could say you're the Messiah. You could say you're the anointed one. That's what Christ means. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven, and I also say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or gates of hell, shall not prevail against it. So Peter says, look, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. And what does Jesus immediately say? Blessed are you. This wasn't just like saying when someone sneezes, God bless you. No, no, this was all of a sudden now, Peter, you have an empowerment upon your life because now you can live with revelation. Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. Blessed are you. And he changes his name to Peter. You went from Simon Barjona, one that's easily shaken, to Peter, that means a rock. Because you know who I am, your life is now established, and you're going to be immovable in the face of adversity. See, it's who you know God to be in the midst of your adversity that's going to determine whether you're going to go forward or go back. Who do you say that he is in your life right now? Peter said, you're Christ, the Son of of the living God. And it, it, Jesus says, you know, it's on this I will build my church. Now, the Catholic church went way out. Of the, they thought it was, the church was going to be built on Peter. That's not what Jesus is referring to. It, it meaning the church was to be built on Revelation. The church was to be built on the revelation that Peter had that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. So if our church is not built upon Jesus Christ, then the thing is, is we don't truly have a church. And when we build upon the revelation that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, then what happens is the gates of hell can't prevail against the church. And in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ globally, we need to come back to the fact that we're established upon Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Because it's in that the gates of hell can't prevail against it. But if we make it about so many other things than the main thing, then what happens is, yeah, then the gates of hell can prevail against us. But we have to be built upon the fact that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. Go to John 11. <clears throat> Verse 25. Thank you, Father. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, 
Though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I like the Amplified, it says, it never actually dies at all. You know, everyone that was ever born into the earth is alive somewhere. Now, they're not all living in the same place. <laughs> That's another sermon. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. And then he asked her a question, do you believe this? Don't you love the questions that Jesus proposed? Do you believe this? And what's her response? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who is to come into the world. So what was Mary's declaration? You're the son, you are the Christ, the son of God. It's amazing that, that when, when she was going through a difficult time, he, he told her who he was and asked her, do you believe this? And her response was, yes, Lord. And she says, you are the son, you are the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're the one that we've been waiting for. You're the son of God. You're the son of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. Just taking my time. First Corinthians chapter one. So are we established on the fact that Jesus is the son of the living God? If you're a born again child of God, just raise your hands. Mm. Hallelujah. We don't fully know or Sometimes we don't fully understand what that means. Take a little rabbit trail here for a second. Peter said, Jesus, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. But if we don't see ourselves as the fact that, that God is on the inside of us, then you always see yourself from a, a limited position. Just real quickly, four, there's four things. Romans chapter nine, verse 26 tells us that we, so Jesus was the Christ, the son of the living God. Romans chapter nine, verse 26 says, we are children of the living God. Second Corinthians six sixteen says, we are the temple of the living God. First Timothy three fifteen tells us we're the church of the living God. And Hebrews 12, verse 21 says, and you go unto Mount Zion, and it tells us that we're going unto a city of the living God. So you have to understand, Jesus was the son of the living God. You and I are children of the living God. And he put the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, so we are the temple of the living God. He established the church, so we're the church of the living God. And one day, when we get to heaven, actually, it taught, in Hebrews, it's talking about the people already in heaven, and says they're the city of the living God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, you see, if we just see ourselves in the, from the standpoint of, well, I'm, I, I'm just a Christian, and that's your limiting view, the thing is, is, is you will never step into the greater. So just as much as Jesus was the son of God, you and I are children of God. A little rabbit trail there. First Corinthians uh, chapter one, verse four. It says, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus. So this grace came by how? By Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And so this grace that came by Christ Jesus was so that we would be enriched 
in everything by who? By him. That we would be enriched. Man, this word enrich means to, to be clothed with abundance. Hallelujah. Enriched also here means to improve or enhance the quality or value of. So when it says here, I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God, which was given to you by Christ Jesus. So by, through, through Christ Jesus that we received this grace and it was through this grace that we were enriched in everything. Enriched. So, so this grace that came into our lives, this favor that came into our lives was to improve, enhance the quality of or value of you. So what Jesus did for each one of us and why is Jesus only is because he improved our value. See, after you got born again, your stock increased. You were just walking through here and you, you were broke. But I'm telling you, when you accepted Jesus as the Lord of your life, the grace of God now came upon you, the favor of God now came upon you, and because of Jesus, you were enriched in everything. He improved your status, he improved your future, he improved your purpose, he improved everything about your life, and all of a sudden now you hold to a greater value, why? Because you have Jesus. Enriched in everything by him, and it tells us in all utterance and all knowledge, even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. The testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, meaning what Jesus spoke, you received it and it, and it, and it established you. I, when you, when you receive the testimony of Jesus, when you received his sacrifice, which was the testimony of Jesus, it, it was confirmed in you. It made you firm. Now get this, so that you come short in no gift. Hallelujah. Because what Jesus did for me and you, you come behind in no gift. If you just, now, if you just see yourself as this just natural going through the motions and going through clocking, a, you know, clocking, a, 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 you know, get, to get a paycheck and just going through life, doing your Sunday morning duty, then you'll just sit here and say, oh, that's cool. But when you lay hold of what I'm sharing this morning, it's going to change how you live. Because it was through this grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that he enriched us in everything. And because of that, I was established. And because I'm established, I come behind in no gift. The word come behind, it means, it come behind means to be late. It means to lack in excellence. It means to be inferior. So if I come behind in no gift, it means I'm not late. Some of you need to hear that. It's not too late. It's not too late to pursue your purpose. It's not too late for your marriage. It's not too late for your destiny. It's not too late for your children. It's not too late. Because of Jesus, I come behind in no gift. I'm not late. It also means uh, to lack excellence. I don't, yeah, I might have been a failure before, but because of Jesus, I don't lack any excellence. <clears throat> And I'm not inferior to anything. That's what the grace of Jesus did for me. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So I come short in no gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end. Meaning he's going to establish you until he comes back. That you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This word called here means to be invited to participate. So God is faithful by whom you were invited to participate in the fellowship of his son. The word fellowship means joint partnership. It means to share in who he is and what he does. <clears throat> Let me say that again. Fellowship means joint partnership. 
It means to share in who he is and what he does. So, so when I put this in context, I have the grace of God on me. I'm enriched in everything. I don't come behind in any gift. And I've been invited to participate and share in what he does and who he is. Hallelujah. So the grace of God is upon my life so I can work with him to do what he does. Hallelujah. Jesus. For sake of time, let's... <clears throat> like to do this whole chapter, but we won't do that. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Sacred time, let's look at verse 22. And just, I'll just refer to it real quick, but 18 talks about, for the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. <clears throat> the world is never going to understand you and me. Stop trying to convince them. Stop trying to debate him. Because Paul is writing by unction of the Holy Spirit and says, you're foolish to them. It makes no sense. But let's look, look, look at 22. For the Jew, Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. <clears throat> but we preach Christ. We preach Christ. Is there a better message? Everything somehow should revolve back to Christ. For Jews request a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. So you could put it this way. The Greeks were the Harvard students of the day. And the Jews were more church hoppers. <clears throat> That just was going around, what's God doing? Where's the new church? What's, hey, this person's prophesying, this person's, that, I, you know, that. So, so th this is kind of the two schools of people. So you had these two people, Jews are requesting a sign and Greeks seek after wisdom. Then it says, but we preach Christ crucified. To the Jews, it's a stumbling block. Why is it a stumbling block to the ones that are looking for signs? Because they want something more. They want to feel it. They want an emotional, emotional high. They want, they want to see something spectacular. We all, we, I want to see signs and wonders. It's part of, part of what we're called to do. That's, I don't want to get ahead of myself or go in. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. I mean, the Harvard students are like, you go where every Sunday? And you look out of a book, you look out, out of some book? You, it, it's not gonna make sense. It's not gonna make sense, but they said, but we preach Christ and him crucified. Meaning it's, there's not really another message we're gonna preach. Verse 20, now this, this is verse 24. But to those who were called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Yes. It doesn't get more wisdom than Jesus. And it doesn't get more powerful than Jesus. So Christ, the anointed one in his anointing, is the wisdom of God and the power of God. If you try to explain it any other way, you're gonna mess it up. Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. So they're basically saying, it's like no matter what debate you try to have someone and well, why, how did we get here and evolution and all those things. And I'm not saying, hey, I'm educated in some of those things and I know how to have conversations. I'm just, I just, there's some places I just know the Lord doesn't want me to go and I just make sure I don't go there. <laughs> and that's like, please. <laughs> we complicate it. Yeah. 
Fuckers. Wisdom and the power, it's Christ. It's Christ. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Second time, let's look at verse 29, that no flesh should glory in your presence. But of him, but of him, you are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But of him, you are in, I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ Jesus. But of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Because the bottom line is, if, we, if, if it's all about the wisdom and, and over here and it's more than Christ, then what happens is, is we're trying to get glory for ourselves. But when you base it on this foundational principle of Christ and him crucified, it is the wisdom of God and it is the power of God. And the only thing you can glory in is him. A lot of times people want signs and wonders. Because they want people to glory in them. Or they want, to, they want to have, do certain things to see what their following would be like. Or to say, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. I wish I, wish I could go. I wish that person would do this. I... Why? 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 Well, I think it'd be cool. You're still missing it. No. He reached into Justin's life. Healed me of a disease. And there are other people like Justin that need to experience the Christ I experienced. Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. Go to Acts chapter, Acts chapter eight. The spirit of the Lord is here. Now, keep in mind, Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. Let's look at verse four. It says, therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached what? <coughs> preached Christ. Mm. So now after Paul had stoned, had Stephen stoned, all those different things were happening and going on at the time, persecution of the church. They were scattered everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. Thank you, Lord. My throat just got all dry. <clears throat> and the multitude, with one accord, hated the things spoken by Philip. But what did he preach? Christ. <clears throat> and seeing the miracles, which he did... Hallelujah. And with a loud voice came out many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed and there was great joy in the city. <clears throat> Thank you, Father. So what we see here, he preached Christ and we see what? The power of God. <clears throat> Verse 10, to whom they also gave heed from the least to the greatest saying, this man is the great power of God. 
So they're referring to this sorcerer. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and what the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs that were done. So in both these accounts, they're preaching what? Christ. <clears throat> They're preaching Christ. And as they were preaching Christ, it said the power of God was there. Why? Because Christ is the power of God. To preach Christ, you're preaching the power of God. You can't preach Christ and not talk about his power. Oh, well, we talk about his love. Yes, we talk about his love. It's who he is. He's, he, he's a part of the Father. He is love. And, and the thing is, is he was love personified in the flesh, but it was to do what? Release the power of God into the earth. It's the whole reason he came was because of love. So Christ is the wisdom and the power. Let's, let's go to verse 26. This message will come out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip saying, arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. <clears throat> this is the desert. So he rose and he went and behold a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace the queen of the Ethiopians <clears throat> who had charge of all her treasury. So you call this guy the Federal Reserve. <clears throat> he was the Federal Reserve of Ethiopia and he's going down and, and yet he's, he's going down there on behalf of the queen. <clears throat> and he'd come to Jerusalem to worship. He was returning and sitting in his chariot and he was reading Isaiah the prophet. So he was reading the word. <clears throat> but then the spirit said to Philip, go near and overtake his, this chariot. So Philip ran to him and he heard him reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? <clears throat> and he said, how can I understand? How can I unless someone guides me? <clears throat> and he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, as a lamb before it shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation for his life is taken from the earth? So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, whom is this prophet saying this? Of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Christ is the power of God and Christ is the wisdom. This man had questions that he needed answering. <clears throat> but what was the answer? Jesus. Because why? He is the power and the wisdom. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're walking through, whatever you're dealing with in your life right now, it's going to come back to Christ. Thank you, Father. Verse 36, now as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said to him, see here the water? What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. <clears throat> now get this. And he answered. Now this is the eunuch. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. <clears throat> see, so now... This Ethiopian eunuch, his life can be built upon something that's immovable. Just like Peter said, who do you, he said to Peter, who do you say I am? He said, I'm the, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. What did Mary say? You're, you're, you're Jesus. You're, you're the Christ, the son of God. And here, the Ethiopian eunuch, what is he? I believe that Jesus is the son of God. Because <clears throat> Christ is the wisdom and the power. Let me close with this. Isaiah 33. Isaiah 33. Verse 
So why is it important for us today to understand that Christ is the wisdom and the power? It's everything. Every day should be a day where you're learning more about Jesus. <clears throat> well, I've heard that before. Yeah, I know Jesus loves me this. I know for the Bible tells me so. There's always more to know. There's always more he can teach us. There's always more he wants us to learn. Because it's this, it's this, our life being built upon this Jesus, the Christ, the Son, it's that that's going to reach the masses in this hour. Yeah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Verse two. O oh Lord, be gracious to us. We have waited for you. Be their arm every morning. Our salvation also in the time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people shall flee. <clears throat> when you lift yourself up, the nation shall be scattered <clears throat> and your plunder shall be gathered. Like the gathering of the caterpillar as the running to and fro of locusts, he shall run upon you. Now look at verse five. The Lord is exalted <clears throat> for he dwells on high. He has filled Zion with justice and righteousness. Now look at verse six. Wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of your times and the strength of salvation. So Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. And Isaiah here says that wisdom and knowledge is the stability of my times. So Isaiah is saying wisdom is what's gonna cause me to be immovable. <clears throat> it also says here that, that, that it's gonna be that... Uh, and the strength of salvation. So what we have to understand is Christ is the wisdom of God and the power of God. So here it says wisdom is going to be the stability of our times and the strength for salvation. <clears throat> so what is going to be the stability of our times with what we talked about? And I'm gonna leave you with this thought. It's Christ. Christ is the wisdom and the stability of right now. Amen. Our world needs stability. Amen. Our world needs stability. Amen. But it's gonna come down to, well, pastor, you know, we have these things going on in our nation. We have these things going on in our nation. It, if you try to figure things out, well, you know, I'm just worried about this and I'm just worried, what if this and what if that and you're, 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 we're not to live according to this world. Christ is going to be the wisdom, is the wisdom and stability of our times. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Our world is hurting. Our world is hurting. And it's time for the church to be the church. <clears throat> Not going to get in petty debates with people about things. Just vote righteousness. That's it. Amen. But we have to be available to a hurting people. And unstable people can't help unstable people. <clears throat> when you have unstable people trying to help unstable people, then you end up having men playing women's sports. Right. 
I, I really, I want us to intercede for hurting people. I want us to intercede for our community. <clears throat> because we have to be the children of God. We have to be the temple of God. We have to be the church of God. And we have to be the city of the living God. <clears throat> See, I, I'm here as a pastor. Yes, I, I desire for people to get born again in the services here. But I actually don't see that scripturally. Ooh. And not saying we shouldn't, we shouldn't do altar calls. We, we need to do altar calls. And I have done altar calls. But according to Ephesians 4, my assignment as a pastor is to perfect the saints for you to do the work of the ministry. The work of the ministry doesn't need to be done. The work of the ministry on Sunday morning is about you being perfected for you to go do the work of the ministry. Make it plain now. That's good. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, I, I, yes. I want people born again in our services. That's... But more importantly, I want you to be a move of God. Yes, sir. I want you to be a move of God. Yes. Hallelujah. But if you're not stable, you can't help the other unstable people. Yes, right. Sunday morning, I, I want to help. I want to help us get stable. Come on. Hallelujah. That's good. How, and is it Christ, the wisdom and the power? Yes. That's good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are we are we willing to be inconvenienced for a move of God? Well, Pat, you know, Pat, you know, I got I got so much I got to I got to do. Well, so do I. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. What if all of a sudden we come to a place where we're having service every night of the week for a year? I, I don't know about that, Pastor. I'm hungry, but not that hungry. <laughs> yeah, or, or start on a Wednesday night. I mean, <clears throat> is, is there any, yeah, I want revival. I want revival. You go back to the, you, you want a sign, is what you want. Oh, I'm, Lord, help me out of this hole here. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And praise you, Father. Mm. Thank you, Lord. I just, I just want all he has for me. I want all he has for our community. I want all he has yes. for you and your yes. family. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And I know it's going to take more you, than, <laughs> than what we've done before. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Speak, Jesus. Mm. Thank, you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Paul said this. He says, I travail for you. Talking to the church. Maybe Galatia, maybe. He goes, I travail in spirit for you until Christ be formed in you. Meaning, meaning, Paul says, I intensely pray for you because I want you to get a full understanding of who God is on the inside of you. Yes. Well, can we just pray for our community, the people in our community that are lost? Father, I thank you. Hallelujah. Just pray with me. Just pray with me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Father, you came and you, you, you lo so love the world. 
It didn't say you came for, for this race or that race, this people group or that people group. It says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Father, we lift up those in our community today that need everlasting life. Hallelujah, Lord. I just thank you, Lord, that you said in your word that no one comes to the Father unless the Holy Spirit leads them. Holy Spirit, I know you're leading him in this hour. So right now, we decree and declare at, in agreement, Lord, that blinders will be removed off their eyes, that they might be able to see the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> that they have the ability to see. They have the ability to see who Christ is, that they have the ability to see who Christ is, that there's something on the inside of them that would be open up to be able to receive who Jesus is and what Jesus has made available and what Jesus has done for them. Lord, I thank you for a great move of God happening in our community. I thank you, Lord, that we're in a, that, that, that the, the assignment has never changed, that, that it's just as Paul said, that I was here, that I would take people out of darkness and then bring them into your marvelous light. Hallelujah, Lord. I thank you for light. I thank you for causing each one of us to be the light. Hallelujah, that you've called us to be. And I thank you that our light as a church and our light as individuals, hallelujah, would so shine before men that they would see our good works and come to a place where they glorify our Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We bind destruction. We bind domestic violence in our community. We bind perversion. We bind the spirit of death and suicide in our community. Hallelujah. We, 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 we had a stebrestiki di asol rebeya. Hallelujah. We come against fatherlessness in our community. I thank you for mentors to step up and, and, and be able to father the next generations. Thank you, Father, for our schools to be a place. Hallelujah. To where they're educated with real things to be educated not and not by agenda. Us. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for, for things that are happening in our community. Hallelujah. Thank you for a great move of God. Thank you for the waters of revival raining all on this territory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, that as people drive by this place, Lord. Hallelujah. That they sense a love. They sense a, a sense of community. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Let's repeat this after me. Father God, I thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you that my life is built on Christ, the Son of the living God. And he is and will always be wisdom and power and bring stability to my times. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you receive that, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.